Good morning. My name is John Donaldson. I'm the pastor of Burns Memorial United Methodist Church, and this is Monday morning, uh, March 8th. I'm going to share the message in just a moment for uh, Sunday, March 7th. Just a couple of announcements real quick. Uh, we're looking into doing a Zoom Bible study, a Bible study by Zoom, probably on Monday night or Wednesday night, uh, maybe about 7 p.m., if you would be interested in being a part of a Zoom Bible study, if you would email me and let me know. Uh, we have a couple. We need a few more to to uh, want to go ahead with it. Also wanted to mention it is uh, March, and the March-April up rooms are now available. If you stop by the church office, you can pick it up. Uh, the caption underneath the, the upper room, it says, Where the world meets to pray. And that's really true. There are uh, people who write for the uh, upper room from all over the world, just page through it. There's a person from Mozambique and from Florida, from Texas, from India. It's just a very international Christian uh, daily devotional, perhaps the most international one in the world. So our, <clears throat> our scripture today is from the book of Numbers, uh, beginning at verse uh, 22 of chapter 6. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. And the sermon today is entitled, Giving and Receiving a Blessing. Bow your heads and pray with me. Eternal God, may the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture of somebody who's famous. Go ahead and say his name out loud when you recognize him. Yes. Yes, his TV character is called Spock, and he was on a TV show called Star Trek. His real name is Leonard Nimoy, and he was famous for that for that hand signal greeting uh, and goodbye, where he would say "Live long and prosper," with a divided in the middle with a thumb out like that. Um, Leonard Nimoy did an interview one time. It turns out that he's Jewish, and he said that his inspiration for his "Live long and prosper" greeting was when he attended the Yom Kippur services and a Kohen at the temple or the synagogue would give a final blessing. And the Kohen is a Hebrew word for priest. And I'll just show you, this is a picture from a Jewish cemetery, uh, a gravestone where a Kohen is buried. And you can see it above their head, above the name, the hands. You see that, how the hands are like that? Yeah, the priest evidently would, instead of one hand, would have two hands like that and join them together like that as he gave the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. That's what the priest would do. And Nimoy said that, that he remembered this and it made an impression on him. And he said that he, as he heard the blessing, he felt indeed that he was blessed, that as they pronounced the Lord's blessing, he felt the Lord's blessing. Uh <clears throat> So we're going to talk about the blessing today from Numbers chapter 6. And maybe as we talk about it, we too will be blessed as we live into the blessing, as we become givers of the blessing and receivers of the blessing. First, let's talk a little bit about the words of the blessing. Uh, three times the name of God is, is, is named the Lord, the Lord, and the Lord. Some people have said that it's repeated three times in a Trinitarian kind of fashion, and that each phrase has to do with a different part, a different work of a different uh, part of the Holy Trinity, that the Father is the one who uh, blesses and keeps, that the Son is the one who grace is offered through, and that the Holy Spirit brings peace. I'm not sure if that's, if that's intended or not, but definitely the subject of all three is the Lord. The, the, the Lord in Hebrew, most people think today is pronounced Yahweh. They used to think it was pronounced Jehovah. But more research and, and uh, work has been done. You know, the Hebrews didn't have a J sound. You wouldn't have a Jacob. You would have had a Yaakov. And uh, part of that was, uh, was correcting that and trying to get the right vowels with the letters. And they think now it's probably pronounced Yahweh, the name of God. 
And it's the I am verb. I am. Except in Hebrew, the vowels uh, were indicated by context and the vowel would give the tense. And so his name, God's name could be I am or it could be I was or it could be I will be. So it's either I am what I am, I was what I was, or I will be who I will be. And certainly with God, it's all three because God is timeless. God is the one who exists. And beyond that, God is the one who causes all other existence. I think it's a reminder, his very name, that, that, that God never had a beginning. I heard a story about a, a girl who asked her dad, uh, who made God? And the answer was simple. Uh, no one made God. God is always. God always has been, is now, and always will be. Yahweh is the subject of all the action in this blessing. Yahweh is the one who does the blessing. He's the one who keeps. He's the one whose face is shining and is offering grace. He lifts up his countenance, and he's the one that gives peace. Blessed be his name. The reality is there's no blessing apart from the Lord. Now, in addition to the name of God, each sentence also has the word you, Y-O-U, in it. And it's you singular. It's not y'all, as we would say in the South, or you guys, as they would say up North. It's not the you plural. It's you singular, which is kind of strange in that this is a, uh, a priestly community prayer, community blessing. God is blessing them all. But the emphasis seems to be that each person is supposed to make this blessing their own, his or her own blessing. So Yahweh, God is the subject, and you is the one who is the recipient. And what's supposed to happen? Well, well, well they're going to be blessed. The word blessed in Hebrew is the word barak, which means to kneel in giving. In other words, in the ancient world, when, when someone offered a gift, uh, they would go down on one knee and offer up the blessing. And so in this amazing picture, God is the one who is blessing. God is the one taking a knee and offering blessings to humanity. And I couldn't help but think about Jesus Christ washing his disciples' feet. Uh, God is the one bringing the blessing. Let's look at a couple other words. The word keep is the word shamar in Hebrew. Uh, it, it literally means to guard, and it's related. It's kind of interesting. It's related to a word shamir, which is thorn. And they, evidently there was a time when, when sheep enclosures, enclosures in the wilderness were made out of thorn briars uh, formed to make an enclosure to keep the sheep safe in. I found a picture of an ancient sheep enclosure, but this is in a place where they use stones. But evidently in the original uh, wilderness areas where they were keeping sheep, they would use briars to make this, this shelter and the sheep would stay within the enclosure, the briar enclosure. But notice how in the, in the enclosure, there was a gate uh, one way in and one way out. The shepherd would stay there. That's where they would camp out. They would guard the gate. When Jesus says, I am the gate, I am the way, I am the truth. I, I am the gate, I'm the doorway. When he says these things, visually, he's saying, I'm the one who stands there protecting the way, protecting my sheep. And the only way to the pasture is to come to me. Um, and so the, the Lord says he's going to keep. And the sense is he's going to protect his people from his sheep, his people from predators. He's going to keep them safe. He's going to guard them, be a wall around them. I think J.R.R. Tolkien picks up on this word keep in uh, his book, uh, Two Towers, where he has a fortress called a, a keep. But this sense of a protected place. Now you have the, uh, a word repeated, face and countenance. Both of them are the same word in Hebrew, but lift up and let your face shine uh, also has an added element of light. The face lifting up has to do with smiling. A uh, modern translation might say, God is smiling, or may God smile upon you. But the, the added factor of the light, shining light, shining countenance, reflects that God is light and his light shines into our darkness. The word gracious is there. Be gracious unto you. Grace has to do with unearned love. A grace period or gratuity is related to this concept. Unearned love and, and a blessing. That, and, and the reality is, friends, that none of us earn our, earn our salvation. 
We receive God's blessings because of God's grace. The last word I want to mention here is peace. Uh, peace in the Hebrew mind wasn't simply the absence of war. Peace is the presence of all kinds of blessings, a good life, a happiness, safety, security, well-being, health. Peace is a, is, a, is a blessedness. So the New Living Translation of Numbers 24 to 27 goes like this. May the Lord bless you and protect you. Protect instead of the word keep. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Amen. And the, the text continues, Whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, I myself will bless them. Who wouldn't want a blessing like this? And, and, and so the, the next question that comes up, if this is the blessing, who gives the blessing? Well, Leonard Nimoy mentioned when he heard it as a kid, in the Jewish world, it had to be a descendant of the Kohen, of someone of the priest family on a certain days, like Yom Kippur. That's when the priest would hold up their hands and, and give the blessing. But you know, there's this theme in the Bible that, that God's ultimate plan is for all of his people to see themselves as his, as God's representatives, God's ambassadors in the world. And even this even predates the priesthood. And so in Exodus 19, the Lord says, although the whole earth is mine, you will be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, predating the, the uh, Levitic, the Arianic priesthood, God's plan was for all the people, all his people to be a kingdom of priests, holy nation. The apostle Peter picks up on this theme in his letter in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are a chosen, and he uses this Jewish language, this Old Testament language to talk about the church. He says, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Uh, John, in his vision of Revelation, picks up on the same theme when he has Jesus, when he hears Jesus uh, uh, speaking of his redeemed in heaven and calling them a kingdom of priests to serve our God. This priesthood of believers this is a big part of the Reformation, Martin Luther and John Calvin, this concept of that we're all called, not just a select group of people, not just clergy, but all of us are called to be God's priests, God's people. And as God's people, we, we're all called to offer blessings, to be a blessing, to represent God's love and God's goodness in the world. Now notice, notice there's a kind of a twist in the verse, a conflict perhaps in the verse. God says, you bless them. Then he says, I'm going to bless them. So who, who does the blessing? Is it God or is it the priest? Well, in the medieval Jewish community, there was a, a commentary written called the Midrash. And some of the writers noticed this conflict here in this verse. And they said, how could God command the priest to bless the people when he's the one blessing the people? And so in typical rabbinic fashion, they used scripture to explain scripture. And they found this quote from the Song of Solomon's, Song of Songs, uh, chapter two, verse nine. My, my beloved stands behind the wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattices, peering through the window frame. And the rabbi said, God is the beloved standing behind the wall. The priest's hands raised in this blessing are the latest, the, 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 the window frame. And God is blessing his people through the window, through the priesthood. In other words, the priest would name it, but God is the one doing the blessing. In other words, we are called to be a blessing people, knowing that as we pronounce God's blessing, it's not the blessing from us that really matters. It's that God is blessing. God's love is coming through and God's blessing is, is, is blessing people. Moses said, and they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. So the priests are the ones who put the name out of God and God is the one who blesses. So who's authorized to bless others in God's name? Friends, all of God's people are called to be priests, to bless others in his name. You might say, John, how do you do this? How do you bless others? Well, we bless others by what we say. We bless others by what we do. 
we bless others as we as we name God and bring God's reality, God's truth, God's love into the world today. A few weeks ago, we had a challenge in the bulletin of the newsletter last month where we asked people to uh, contact two or three folks this week who they haven't spoke to, who they don't speak to on a normal basis from the church. And, you know, we're trying to combat isolation of the COVID and help people to get in touch with other people. Well, I heard from those who are making the phone calls and I heard from people who were receiving the phone calls. And let me tell you, it was a blessing for both parties. People loved being contacted and knowing that they were remembered and, and, and loved and were not forgotten. And they loved being called and being heard, their stories heard as they would share. And people loved making the phone calls. It was a blessing to, to reach out with love. Friends, we're called to all of us to be a blessing through things that we say, through things that we do. And there can be no end of examples of how you can be a blessing to your church members, to your family, how you can share God's love. We have some folks who are blessed in sending notes and writing notes. And what an amazing blessing to, to, uh, for people to open up cards and have notes, uh, notes of love and concern and peace. And a blessing, I think, for the person who is sending the card. To know that they are part of this, uh, of, of revealing, of sharing God's love. And so, in this blessing from Numbers chapter 6, this Arianic blessing, you have the words of the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. You have the person giving the blessing, which I believe is meant to be all of God's people. Lastly, you have the recipients of the blessing. In other words, if you're going to throw the football, someone's got to be there to catch it. Uh, you have to have, if you're going to bless, you need somebody to be on the receiving end. This is the you of the blessing. And friends, I, I want you to know that sometimes, sometimes we're the givers. Sometimes we are the receivers. Ricky Skaggs sang a, a country song not long ago with this refrain. Somebody's praying, I can feel it. Somebody's praying for me. Mighty hands are guiding me to protect. Protect me from what I can't see. Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe that someone's praying for me. Angels are watching. I can feel it. Angels are watching over me. Skaggs is singing. I think the song was written by John Elliott, but singing about the idea that somebody is praying for him. Sometimes we are the giver. Sometimes we're the ones praying for other people. Sometimes... We're the one with our friend on our shoulder praying for us, amen? A few years ago, probably 20 years ago or so now, my family and I were able to go out to California and see different places. And one of the places we saw were the Redwood State Park and the Redwood trees, some of them as old as 1,800 years old, some of them uh, going 370 feet in the air. Our tallest trees behind the playground are about 110 or 120 feet up. These are, are three times that height, 370 feet in the air, some of them as wide as 26 feet in diameter. It's, a, it's an amazing forest, just a beautiful place to visit. I was surprised, though, when I was walking through there with the size of the trees, how relatively close they are to each other, that they're huge, but they're not really scattered that far apart. And you think as big as they are, they, they, they want more room. Well, I asked the tour guide about that, the, the park ranger, and the ranger said, well, you know, the reason they are close together is that their roots are interlocked with each other. And so the roots of this tree reach out and the roots of this tree and they, and they lock together. And he said, the reason why these redwoods are able to stand as tall as they are is that they hold each other up. Isn't that a great thought? Friends, we're called to be a part of a church that, that holds each other up. Sometimes we're the ones giving the hugs. Sometimes we're the ones receiving the hugs, but we're called to be a supportive, a blessing giving and blessing receiving community. And part of the way, by the way, part of receiving the blessing is believing in it. Believing that, that, that when, the, when, when we hear those words, the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. When you hear those words, part of it is to believe it. Believe that God's blessing is on you. I think we're meant as Christians to move forward with confidence. 
Next week is uh, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, two weeks away, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, one of the early heroes of Christianity was an Irishman named Columbia. He grew up in Ireland, uh, became a, a priest and a monk. Somehow he got in, in, in trouble, arguing or something, and they sent him out on a mission trip. <laughs> and he spent the rest of his life as a missionary across the water, across the Irish Sea, into, over in Scotland. And he brought a team of missionaries with him, and he did very much for Scotland what Patrick had done for Ireland a few hundred years earlier. Now, at that time, instead of being uh, all grasslands and sheep, Scotland was covered by a thick forest. And Columbia would often travel from tribe to tribe amongst these Picts and, and uh, Scots and the different groups that were there. He'd, tra he'd travel amongst those tribes and it would seem like a scary thing to do because they might catch him and kill him. Well, he was known for writing prayers down. and One of his prayers uh, became a poem and uh, has been translated into English. A little bit of it goes like this. Alone with none but thee, my God, I journey on my way. What need I fear when thou art near, O king of night and day? More safe am I within thy hand than if a host did round me stand. Columbia confident moving forward because not because of his army, but because he knew God's blessing was on him. I think Columbia, South Carolina, named for, for St. Columbia. Uh, confidence. Helen Keller, blind in death, wrote, God is our father, we are his children, therefore the darkest clouds will break, and though the right be worst, wrong shall not triumph. Confidence from Helen Keller. Mother Teresa wrote, no need for us to despair, no need for us to be discouraged, no need if we have understood the tenderness of God's love. You are precious to him. He loves you and he loves you so tenderly that he carved you on the palm of his hand. When your heart feels restless, when your heart feels hurt, when your heart feels like breaking, remember, I am precious to him. He loves me. He's called me by my name. I'm his, and he loves me. God loves me, Mother Teresa wrote. Friends, God wants us to be confident in our walk with him, wants us to receive this blessing, and to know that amongst humanity that we are blessed, that nothing, neither life nor death, nor sickness, nor cancer, nor COVID, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God, amen? I, I believe that this is a core truth of the Bible, this this concept that God wants us to, to be blessed, to be a blessing people and to know that we are blessed. And so it's not surprising when you read about an archaeological find like this. Uh, in 1979, they were doing an archaeological dig in the old city wall of Jerusalem. A team of archaeologists led by a man named Gabriel Barclay found two miniature scrolls rolled up in a burial complex that, that had been in a cave they found as they were digging in a, in a part of the old city. Evidently, for a while, this cave had been occupied when the Turks had occupied Jerusalem. They had stabled their horses there. But come, when they removed all the Turkish uh, rubble and everything from that time, and when, when, that, when that was there, when they dug deeper, they found that this cave had been part of a priestly area where the Kohen, where the Levite priests around, who served in the temple would have lived and, and uh, and, and amongst their things, they found two uh, little bitty amulets that might have been sewed to the bottoms of robes or worn around the neck. And they're all rolled up. And, and uh, one person said that they look like, if you look like a cigarette, that would be rolled up. If you're a cigarette smoker, you would know what I mean, but a small cigarette kind of rolled. Um, so they, they brought them to the, uh, <clears throat> to the museum in Jerusalem and studied for three years how to unroll these things without cracking them and destroying them. Finally, they figured out how to do it, and they unrolled these, these little silver balls, and they found there were words written on them on the inside before they were, the metal was rolled into this amulet. And they discovered that these words written on there go back to the 7th century before Christ, which is 2,700 years ago, which is 500 years older than the oldest Dead Sea Scrolls. 
when they were made, the Solomon's temple still stood. Uh, in other words, the words on these scrolls are the oldest ever found recorded words of the Bible. And you know what they say? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. It's as if God wanted his words of blessing to last for all time. Friends, be a blessing to other people. Receive blessings from other people. And know, know, know in your heart that you are blessed by God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.